Hi, this is Nell, illustrator slash animator slash generic creative and now 3D printing enthusiast. 3D printing was in my bucket list since last year. I wanted to start a small printing miniatures, pieces of jewelry, and overall projects that didn't take too much space. Those kind of projects usually require a fair amount of detail, so I decided on getting a resin printer. I did some research regarding the 3D resin printers currently in the market, and after comparing price, print quality, and suitability for beginners, I ended up choosing the Elegu Mars, but given COVID-19 struck, it was hard to get one delivered my way. While waiting on the Mars to be restocked so I could buy it, Elegu announced an improved model, the Elegu Saturn, so I decided to fight for my place in the pre-sale quite unsuccessfully, but given the success of the pre-sales, Elegu decided to make more units and launch a second pre-sale, and I could finally get my hands on one. The Elegu Saturn comes with a toolkit that includes a screwdriver, a set of resin powering paper cones, three pairs of globes, a measuring cup, a mask, a clamp to cool treated supports, a metal scraper, a plastic scraper, loose screws, and tools to tighten screws, a manufacturing 10% discount code card, a USB with all the relevant software and files, and the manual. What it does not include and you absolutely need for printing are 3D printing resin, alcohol, containers, and a UV curing machine. Since I am an absolute beginner, I watched several videos in YouTube to get a general glimpse of what I should expect, and realized resins are fairly toxic and therefore you should prepare yourself and your workspace accordingly. So it was easy for me to conclude that some disposable paper layers below the printer will be suitable, and maybe placing the printer in the floor for easy mopping. I soon realized this was impractical for maneuvering, so I moved the printer over a steady table. It is also recommended to put it in a place where no direct sunlight can reach it. Now for the unboxing part. I ungrabbed the plastic film from the printer and lift the cover, which is made of transparent direct plastic, rigid but slightly flexible and not heavy at all. I had a nostalgic moment for a bit because it smells like my little pony toys from the 90s. I removed the protective foam inside and followed the instructions in the box. I connected the printer and turned it down, and right away the fan made a gentle sound. The next step was to set it up. I took off the protective film from the printer screen and the resin tank. You must pay close attention to this step because there are films you must remove, but there are also layers you absolutely must not. It comes properly labeled such, although there are labels that have small print that might be hard to read for some people and still human error might get you in trouble, so yeah, be careful with this step. After this it was time to do some calibration to level the build platform. I got a little bit confused since I assumed the build platform holder could be moved manually, but in fact it does automatically when you give it the instruction from the touch screen menu. For this, I put the build platform in place and followed the instructions regarding making the screws loose and I already had unscrewed the resin tank and put it away before, which is a required step for calibration. Then I put a sheet of thick paper from levering and then click move set axis to zero, which gives the instruction to the build platform to come down all the way. Once down, I aligned the build platform with a levering paper, tightened the screws to secure the build platform in this position, and proceed to give the instruction in the touchscreen for the build platform to go back up, pressing the 10mm option 10 times. I then put the resin tank back in place, and now our Elegus Saturn is ready for printing. The USB that comes with the Elegus Saturn has the installation files for Cheetobox, a slicer program that will handle your 3D files and make them ready for printing. It also includes a test file for said program. Since my name is Danger, I skipped the tutorial printing and went right away into printing my own files. If you buy your 3D printing files, they should come ready for printing and you shouldn't have any problems, but if you are printing your own 3D meshes, there are certain steps you need to perform to make sure they are ready. 
Step number one, make sure your model is a single mesh and contains no errors. There are tutorials that guide you through this. I use the Setbrush 2020 3D Print Prep tutorial made by Glenn Patterson. It guides you through the process to follow in Setbrush and Mesh Mixer, a free tool by Autodesk specialized for preparing files for 3D print. Step number two, mind your normals. If you have flipped normals, they won't print. Step number three, if you are printing at a fixed scale, you must specify the size. For one of my planet projects, I needed specific measures to fit Swarovski stones, so I used Blender to do this. Bear in mind, the scale between Cheetobox and Blender is not the same, so you will have to mess with this number in here to make it match depending on your file. If it is real size in Blender, the golden number to place in here to export with the right scale to Cheetobox is 1000. Once you have your files in Cheetobox, it's time to prep them for print. First, you want to select your printer from the Cheetobox menu. It shall give you the overall specs of your machine. Then, you select the specs of your resin. This feature is pretty cool because it allows you to have an estimate of how much each print will cost. Then, you fill the print settings. There are databases around the web that can provide you with tested profile settings for each resin available in the market. You will find them in forums or in websites or the social networks of the resin brand. You must do your own research regarding the brand and color you are planning to use, given these numbers are specific to each type of resin. Now, it is time to import your file and arrange it. This tool in here helps you hollow the model, so you can save a considerable amount of resin. And this one in here creates a hole in your model, so all the resin inside can leak out or dry or both, otherwise it will take longer to cure and in some cases it might ruin your print. Then you have this section which allows you to build supports so your model can stick to the plate and print. Cheetobox lets you do this automatically, which saves a lot of time, but it is recommended to check it manually, given the machine sometimes puts supports in areas that might be problematic to remove from afterwards, like face features or hard to reach places. Once you have your file ready, it is time to save it in a USB and print it out. As I mentioned earlier, the resins in liquid form are toxic, so it is recommended for you to use clothes you won't miss in case you spill resin over them. It is also paramount for you to protect your hands with gloves and your mouth and eyes from the fumes. Once we are protected, we can proceed to handle our resins. Given the pandemic, the accessibility of printing resins was limited when I started this project, but I could eventually get my hands into the Anycubic Skin Color Resin, which works pretty good with the Eleku Saturn. You just need to adjust your cheat box files to the resin specs like I mentioned before. Now it's time to get the resin into the tank. Carefully, you pour the resin on the container at about one third of its total capacity. Then, cover the printer and proceed to print. The Elego Saturn will take from a couple of hours to a couple of days, depending on your project and the settings you specified for the print. Once your print is finished, it is time to clean everything. I start by retrieving all the unused resin from the tank and put it back into its original container, aiding myself by the cone papers that came with the printer. Bear in mind they are fragile and can get soaked in resin and break before you finish, causing resin to leak everywhere, so try not to overflow them, pouring the resin little by little. The tank is fairly heavy and you need to hold it into position during a considerable amount of time, so it can be a little bit challenging if you don't lift regularly. Once the extra resin is back in the container, we clean the tank. Then it's time to clean the prints in alcohol. I filled some containers proportional to the size of my print, so I could save on alcohol too. Bear in mind that if uncurated resin is left on your model, it will cause trouble, so make sure there are no shiny parts on it before you consider the cleaning part done. Once you are done with your cleaning, you take the alcohol containers outside so they can evaporate. Let's remember, this is toxic waste, so it is not safe to pour it in the sewers, nor to keep it easily accessible for children or pets. It is also very flammable, so keep it away from fire. Now, it is time to create your prints. 
You can use an UV light station or if you have access to free range organic UV rays sponsored by a sunny day, you can use them. Bear in mind this process can cause some areas to turn funny, so proceed according to the needs of your own project. After some hours, your prints should be ready. Since I was a first timer in all this, mistakes were made. I'm going to list all the problems I went through so you don't have to. Mistake number one, not removing all protective films. When you first receive your printer, the build platform comes with a plastic film you need to peel off, so your base support can stick to its surface, and when the build platform starts going up, it can create a stalactite of the sign goodness. Well, I pretty much didn't peel say layer, which caused the resin not to stick to the blade. So when it went up, all my layers cured flat at the bottom of the tongue. Of course, the prints were ruined. Mistake number two, flip normals. This happened because I made my own 3D models and forgot to flip my normals. So the printer took the flip normals as holes and did not print those areas. This is how meshes with flip normals look like in Cheetahbox. If your mesh looks like this, you can easily fix it by bringing your OBJ back to a 3D program. In my case, I use Blender and make sure all normals are facing outside. Mistake number three, bad accommodation. I am not sure why it happens, but whenever I lay models with holes flat on the surface, the printer created a solid face on those holes. I solve it by tilting the models a little, but I have no clue why this actually happens. If you have an explanation, please write it in the comments below. It will be highly appreciated. Mistake number four, stopping the printing midway. When I printed a figurine, I realized the tank will run out of resin before finishing. So I decided to pause the printing, refill the tank and then resume, which caused for the print to have a clear line of resin across the area where I paused. I'm not sure your feeling while printing will solve this, or causing the same effect or make it worse, but I assume the best course of action is to make sure your tank has more than enough resin for your prints so you don't have to refill the tank. Mistake number five. This is not exactly a mistake as much as it is a suboptimal way of doing things. When I pour the resin back to the container, I just use the paper cones that came with the printer, but actually you need a proper plastic funnel to do this and the paper is only there to one, make sure that resin don't stick to your funnel and two, so the residues of your tongue get filtered out and don't come back to your container. So yeah, basically you can solve a lot of the spillage that I warned you before by just using a proper plastic funnel. Mistake number six, not to check all the country regulation for importing resin when buying from abroad. This one can be quite a headache and might or might not be a problem for you depending where you live, where you are importing from and which carriers you are using. The first bottle I bought was one liter of anycubic resin from Amazon USA and I had no issues at all. But the second time I decided to buy a liter from Power Resins, which was a type of resin specialized for casting jewelry that is more expensive than traditional resins which was sent from Turkey using DHL as courier. Again, this depends on the rules and regulations of each country, but if what you are importing is in liquid or powder form and you are using a courier service, there is a good chance that your package gets stuck in customs and you will need a custom broker to take it out, whose services might cost even more than what you paid for the resin. So yeah. This was my journey in this mm, short time that I have 3D printing. I hope you find it useful. If you have tips and tricks, uh, please let me know in the comments below. It will be highly appreciated. We are all learning here. And thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.